Hey guys, a lot of you guys asked me about the Buffalo family and if I knew people in Buffalo. I did. The boss of the family, his name was Joe Todaro. His son was the underboss, Joe Todaro Jr. After the Castellano hit and uh, we took over, Frankie De Chico was killed. I think you know that story. And uh, an article came out in the newspaper about the boss of the Buffalo family, Joe Todaro, was going to kill John Gotti because he was close with Carlo Gambino and Paul Castellano and John called me in. I was already a captain. And he says, I'm going to send you down to Florida to meet with Joe Todaro about this article. I said, all right. He said, just talk with this guy about the article and about, you know, the Castellano hit. You know, that we had nothing to do with it, our usual story that was coming out, we had nothing to do with it, and all this other shit. I said, all right, I know how to handle myself with him. And we made arrangements because I never met him as a friend, a made guy, or obviously as a boss of a family. So there was going to be somebody we were going to meet in Florida who already met me as a, a captain, and he was going to introduce me to Joe Todaro as the boss of the Buffalo family. Now, they were basically in Buffalo all the time. I know a little bit about them. They had a weird situation. First of all, they were the only family up there and in that entire region, in that area. And uh, when guys got made, I had heard that they immediately made them union delegates in different unions to run the unions. And they actually went to work in that union being a delegate, and they were also a made guy. I thought it was a little strange. The other thing that I thought was strange that when you become the boss, I never heard of you putting your son as the underboss of the family. It's called nepotism. It's really not done. You always put someone else. Usually somebody who's on the other side in, in a different faction, so you bring in the family. But um, that's the way they did it. And he owned this hotel in Florida. And that's where the meeting was going to happen. So I believe it was Huck. But I'm not even sure. But another guy, a made guy, came down with me, and uh, we went down there to meet him. They met me at the airport, took me to a place. Then they picked me up to go to this meeting. It was scheduled in his hotel. I got there, and uh, we went into the hotel. We went into the elevator. No one was in the elevator but us. We went up to the mezzanine floor. The elevator, the doors opened up. When I walked in, there was guys standing around, and they were obviously his people, bodyguards, all over the fucking place at the elevator. So I walked over with the guy who was going to do the introduction. I sat there at his table. It was a, actually a coffee table with a couple of big chairs around. And I sat in one and he sat in one. And uh, I was introduced to him as being the representative of the family, which is the boss. And I was a Cabrigine in the Gambino family under John Gotti. And we talked a little bit. At first, he was courteous, but he didn't seem like the boss is from New York. He just seemed 
He had an air about him. Like he was talking down to me, in a way. But he could do that. He is a boss. And he says, I hear a lot of things about you. I never met him. I didn't know him, really. I just heard of his name. He was an old timer. And uh, he was in place years ago after this guy Magadino became, he, re he was gone. He became the boss, this Joe Todero. And he said, listen, Sammy, I want you to bring John a message. And he was starting to get a little cocky. Make sure you listen. Make sure you understand this. I said, okay. He said, there was a newspaper article about me killing John Gotti because of what happened. He said, don't pay no mind to the newspapers. They don't know what they're talking about. Tell John Gotti he'll be already safe. You want me to bring that message to John Gotti? Yes. I says, I could tell you now, he doesn't believe that. If we, I included myself, if we believe that, you would probably be dead already. We have a hundred shooters with us. So I don't think he's too concerned with what was said in the newspaper. I'm down here to meet you and say, we had nothing to do with this, but we're gonna keep our family together. We're gonna to keep the family strong under John Gotti's leadership. I want to give you a message from him that you'll be okay. We don't believe in that article. And we could have a, a fairly good relationship. I know he didn't like what I said. I gave him a little bow smile, but deep inside I didn't give a fuck what he felt. I didn't like what he said, and he could not like what I said. I could give a fuck less. Before we got done talking, he wanted me to go talk with his son in another area, in another place. And I would be introduced to him as the underboss. So I said, okay, we shook hands. I said, when I bring that back, I'll bring back your messages. Come to think of it, maybe I'll call John and I'll give him the messages before I even go home. Okay, Sammy, do what you feel. I got up, I another smile, I bowed my head in respect. And I walked away to the elevator I was taken down. We walked out into a street. People were waiting for me. I got in the car and we went to the beach. He kept going like this to me. I guess he didn't want to talk in the car. Smart move. I know about bugs. I know what's going on. It's a good move. And I was quiet. We got to the beach, we got out, we walked onto the beach. He said, when we talk, face the ocean. Now nobody could record, we see the whole ocean, there's no boats, there's nothing out there that could be recording us, I understand. I think it's overdone, but I agree. But as we face the ocean, he was still walking slowly towards the ocean. And of course, I followed right next to him. And we talked about the unions, what was going on. He asked me a little bit about the Castellano thing. And he says, you know, 
we got to be careful how we talk. So we just walk and talk until we get to the water. I said it's a little strange to me. Why? I just talked to your father upstairs and we talked about murders and things that happened, the Castellano hit, not much, but we talked. I would assume that he knew that area was clean. Being he owns the place, he had full control, nobody was on that mezzanine floor but us. And we were able to talk in there. We are on the beach, walking towards the ocean. Concerned with a bug? Didn't make sense to me. But we kept walking. We started talking a little bit about things, and again, he brought up the, the Castellano thing. I said, we're unaware of who did it. There were some shootings. You do know that a guy named Frankie DeChico, who was the underboss, was killed. We're not sure who did that either. But we're going to go ahead. We got our family together. I brought it to his attention, too. We have 100 shooters. You know, like his face, his lips puckered up a little bit and he nodded. Seemed to be a little impressed with that number. We walked further. Now, he had on shorts, Bermuda shorts, sandals, and a shirt. That's how they dressed down in Florida. I had good shoes, Italian shoes. Italian made shoes I had on, a good pair of slacks, Italian knit shirt. We talked and walked a little further. By this time we were in the water, up to my ankles. I'm saying to myself, this guy's fucking nuts. We're walking in the ocean now. He's worried about a bug? My shoes are on, my socks are on, my pants are fucking soaking wet, everything is wet, and we're still walking. I started to say something as soon as the water went past my belly button and was coming up towards my chest. I couldn't help myself. I said, Joe, I'm soaking fucking wet, bro. My wallet, my money, in my pocket. Well, how fucking far out are we going to walk? This don't even make sense, bro. I'm a little guy. I'm fucking five foot nothing. We keep going, I'm going to drown. I wonder what John Gotti's going to say about that. Oh, you'll be all right, Sam. You'll be all right. We'll get, we'll get everything tailored and fixed for you. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it, really. I just think it's strange. We talked a little while longer and we came back out. I never experienced anything like that in my life. I remember at a meeting, Chin Giganti said, when you leave New York, go over any bridge and get out of the city of New York and the boroughs of New York. Goza Nostra is not the same. It's fucking weird. They have a different mentality, different type of people. They're just not this hardcore, in-your-face type of mafia. Five families growling and barking at each other from time to time. Bodies being left all over the fucking place. You make you guys, you made them union delegates and they go to work? <sighs> you couldn't do that in New York. I mean, I don't, there's people who worked, there's people who did things I worked. There's no, nothing wrong with working, but it was, it's just the whole thing was weird. And that's, they do that so 
they have a job and if they're followed, it looks like they're going to work and they're a delegate. I felt if you're that afraid of the law, you should quit. You don't belong. We have to deal with that in the city 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You could be home banging your wife. You're thinking, I wonder if there's a bug next to the bed. But that's the mentality. It's totally different. And I've met with people from Philly. There's a lot of tough guys out of Philly and Detroit and different places all over the country. But this one meeting made Chin's words ring in my ears. Now, this the Darrow guy, supposed to be a tough guy. And maybe he was. He had a nickname, uh, Lead Pipe Joe, or something like that. So I guess he smashed somebody's head in with a pipe. I guess he did work. But they were so different, it was incredible. So you guys who wanted to hear about the Buffalo f crime family, that's as much as I know. I never had any major dealings with them after that. That was about as major as it got. I never met with Joe Tadaro or his son ever again. Maybe I'll meet them in heaven after I'm gone, if they're both dead, if there's an ocean. Otherwise, I guess I'll never see them. Adios, motherfucker. This is my story about Buffalo. I hope you like it. If you like it, press like. If you love it, press subscribe. If you don't like it, adios, motherfucker. <laughs>